Right now, I would like to give the floor to a person who does not need to be represented or introduced. In the first days of Maidan, we were overwatching our iPhone screens. We could have seen only noises. However, most of the time you could listen to Ruslan, who was the voice of Maida, who was supporting the toughest moments of the old movement. Vindukidze was really concerned about the fact that after Maidan, Ukrainians didn't uh, fail to protest and do uh, not I demand reform. So I was there in the streets Ruslan and I was listening to Ruslan and I think Ruslana and I think she has enough understanding and inspiring people about what has to be continued and the deal of Maidan has to be continued. I'm giving the floor to Ruslana right now. Oh, so many people around here. Glory be to Ukraine. Today, in the night between the 29th and 30th of this, uh, November, it was the, actually the dismiss of the students' Maidan. In this memorial night, we're putting people together. We're going to be there in the Maidan uh, at 11 p.m in order to see each other again, in order to say the truth of that night last year, in order to say when and why it started, and in order to come back to that real constructive Euro Maidan, for the sake of which we went in the streets, never expecting that it's going to be a bloody fight and all the developments there too. In the morning, I just reminded myself how we were hiding in the St. Michael's Cathedral, and I couldn't even guess it would have been a year like this at that time. When we met last time with Kaha Bindukidze, actually, I was so much impressed by his manner of speaking. Three thirds of his speaking, he was just calm. I was even thinking, what are we going to talk about right now? Because he's so calm. We were just speaking about lives. And every time he was sitting, covering his eyes with his palm and uh, rubbing his forehead all the time, not listening to myself, not listening to himself, he was like a shaman, like uh, the Ukrainian, Western Ukrainian Molfar. And then he was ignited by so much expression and so much drive. And we met in the Intercontinental Hotel, and I was just getting my my sight back. I, I imagine all the Georgians are like that, but this person was not only speaking emotionally, but he was so much passion for Ukraine, much more than myself without over-exaggeration of that, because this person was speaking about some constructive emotional thing. Emotion is good enough, but how are we going to do that, guys? Can you imagine that this looks, looks like this, this, and that? And I'm a musician by trade, and I understand very few in the economic processes and all the things, but Kaha was the right guy who was in three minutes or three seconds could explain to me what means energy dependency, and we've spoken a lot about energy independence of Ukraine. When I was in the parliament, I raised this draft law on renewables that I was then buried into. They, we, wouldn't give, we wouldn't be given a chance to actually develop anything like that at the time. It was not only an issue of economy, but it was a, an issue of ideology. And uh, believe me, there were many things to talk about with Kaha. Not minutes, not hours, but days. And the only thing that I cannot forgive for myself and will never do is when Kaha Bendukiza came to me for the first time and he said, Ruslana, you have no time. You have no time. Let's go right now, right away. 
Let's go. Michael will get us. And I mean, Michael is Saakashvili, Mikhail Saakashvili. I've known Saakashvili since 2004. And since the time we've been actively communicating to each other. And, you know, I felt like, OK, Kaha, I will get to you sometime. But then I'm saying to myself, what am I going to listen to this? I'm not very good. Uh, I'm not a very good expert in economics. OK, next time, next time, next time. And I'm not making it next time. And next time I'm calling in a couple of months to Kaha. I realized that this is a precious person for Ukraine. And in Maidan, we had so many different speakers like Andrei Larionov. I kept realizing and understanding these are precious, absolutely precious people for Ukraine. I've taken their phone numbers, I grabbed their hands, and when I saw Andrei Larionov for the first time, for the first time we were talking till 5 o'clock in the morning. Is it okay, Andrei, that I'm talking about these details? I can only say that I, you brought me to the club, not my, that I brought you to the club. I was really surprised how much drive you had that time. But honestly, these are the people who you just realized that this is it. These are the voices that have to be sound right here in Ukraine so we can get used to different talking. Because the talking that's been always on air, sometimes it is empty, sometimes it is useless, sometimes it is sound, just sounding something. And from Kaha and from Andre, I learned that when you are saying must do, or good to do. You need to think systematically, think by modeling, clearly building, quest or startup model. And this professionalism changed my mentality. Of course, I'm a musician professionally, and I have a big complex or a big lack behind over civil society activities. It's not something abstract that you can think about. It's going to be everywhere, interactive, talking to people. You you got to find your own place. But I position myself that I have the best feeling for the image of Ukraine. And I made myself an agency like this. I started my own business a Ukrainian image agency, and was the last meeting with Kaha dedicated to this very initiative. Not the Kaha who had lots of meetings. It was around three weeks ago. He said, Ruslana, I'm waiting for you. And I said, it will be, it will be uh, midnight. And he said, whatever. We, we always met in the Intercontinental Hotel near the St. Michael's Cathedral. And I so I came and we were talking until 2 AM. And I saw that I was exhausted. But I would like to say that it is really suspicious that he's gone. And it is a very huge loss for me, huge loss. If you had a conversation with him for five minutes, you would be filled with his energy and his details, and, and he was very sincere. And this, this is an ideal moment where Ukraine and Georgia are really uh, close nations. Even we sometimes continued each other's ideas. We had these brainstorms, and I really regret this. It's gone forever because he's a very unique person in the world. Uh, we can lose time, and I want you to uh, get this idea from our conversation. Ruslana, you are losing time. I don't think it's, uh, it's enough to just do something, because in show business you have to do real, really successful project, and we have learned to be very responsible. And when Kaha said that you that we didn't have time, and I understood. You know, sometimes you have this feeling inside. You're just trying to press this to, to, to repress it. 
And despite all laws and regulations and methods, approaches to startups, to development, uh, to developing of economic initiatives, we have to understand that we don't have any time. We have to do everything fast. Uh, as soon as possible, I have to speed up. Yeah, it would be should be compressed. What he ha what we have done in a month should be compressed to a week. And I have a what I'm asking you. Yeah, just for step on it. In every startup, just show your creative class. Show these innovators who are pushing the world. Uh, driving the world forward and follow them, lead them forward and just forget about pol politics, it's deconstructive. They are fighting for influence, for money, and I really believe that we are the ones who will uh, get hold of the situation. I understand that successful examples will lead people forward because people are tired of talking, relax, we will do it. People want to see the good example and you will show them this example, it will be evident for them. For them. Uh, you will rise people, just popularize it. If you're doing a great project, popularize it. Be your own promoters. I see lots of different initiatives, but I, and I can't just follow people everywhere and, and make videos. Make your own promo. Oh, I don't have time about that. If you do a project, just spend some time on its promotion. And so really, I want, you, I want you to step on it and put some power. Uh, one person in America said, Ruslana, you had a great situation for investments. What are you doing? Don't waste your time. Just people even invest money in Syria. Well, thanks. Thanks has been a compliment. But really, Ukraine is seen as a country has been very good potential all over the world. I saw that in the US, Europe, and America sees Ukraine as a wonder that has to become something, and it's very sincere. I'm not exaggerating. We are now in a boxing ring where people are boxing and people really believe that Ukraine will win with peace and with light. People really want us to uh, win and I sure that it will be, we will not achieve it without your uh, help. Be satisfied. Uh, don't waste your time. Don't forget this person. Kahav Bendikizi, he was a real patriot of planet and a real patriot of humanity. He wanted peace for everybody. I'll be happy to see you with your initi initiatives. Come to my down today, you will be able to have a speech. You will be able to uh, exchange contacts. Uh, our phone zero six sim six seven. Uh, you can just approach approach me and I will I will, I will repeat it zero six seven seven six two six seven four two. And um, they say that uh, Maidan is gone and where are students I say they're okay they're working. Thank you, glory to Ukraine. I would really like to hear uh, people uh, saying their speeches on the topics we are relishing every day uh, on the energy sector and their forms during war and journalism in informational war. Speaking about reforms after war, this is a very 
uh, delicate Merkel subject. Just remember the Mer uh, Mrs. Merkel uh, quotation uh, when she uh, said, reforms in Ukraine are sanctions in, your, in, in Europe, because it means Europe is very focused on the reforms, and without that we can't uh, go on with the European integration. Uh, speaking about the journalism in uh, a situation of informational war, our IT staff is working in, in, in the U.S. We've got a huge team of monitors, people who have monitor, monitor up to 50 articles on Ukraine. We have good reports. We have good analytics. And we're doing this for more than a month. If you're interested, you can contact us. And I will need your collaboration because informational war is uh, uh, is a bit is worse than Tansk in the east. I know they are waiting for a coffee break. Uh, see you. Be happy and please trust in yourself.